Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's your boy, Delightful Kiss Boy, and I'm back with another delightful video just for you. And this one is kind of silly because uh, what I want to do is I want to play the normal mode, so non analyst mode, the main story, and I want to see how low of a score I can get. And I want to see if it goes into the negatives where I will owe the dealer money. Um, so for those of you who don't know, the way the score works in like normal endless mode is it's something like um, the, the only things that impact your score are when you smoke cigarettes, drink beer, or die. So I want to just try to get into the negatives by dying over and over and over again. So let's just, uh, let's just send it in, buddy. Let's get started. This is going to be extremely fun. I can just tell you right now, like people in my last video who, uh, not my last, my last buckshot video where I was talking about, um, when you should shoot yourself. <laughs> they were like, but it's so much fun to shoot yourself in this game. Like if you just shoot the dealer all the time, then it's no fun. So I figured, hey, why don't I do the opposite of that and just shoot myself all the fucking, hello Gus, my kitty Gus has come to join me in my, um, plight to get as little money as possible. Um, but, you know, I, let's see if it's really that fun to just shoot yourself over and over and over again. Um, so who is the biggest loser I can think of, and who would I like to subject to an eternity of shooting yourself over and over and over again in the head? I think the, the only one I could think of is the one and only uh, Elon Musk. Fuck that guy, dude. Fuck Elon, dude. Ruining my favorite website, which was already a cesspool, making it even worse. Oh, gosh, you are a purry little boy. You're going to want to look away. Shield your eyes, Gus. There's a lot of um, self-harm going on here. But actually, it's Elon, so it's okay. You can look. We don't care about Elon. Anyway, uh, I'm probably going to just... Uh, so this, I'll, I'll show you the first, the first round, and then... Uh, well, there we go. Off to a good start. Immediately shooting ourselves. And then I'll probably edit the video so you don't have to watch me die. I think, um, I think it subtracts... $2,000 off of your score every time you die. So this is going to take me quite a while. $2,000 and was it 70? 70,000 divided by 2 is uh, 35,000. So that's thir 35 times that I need to die to get to zero. And then I want to do one extra after that to get to negatives, see if it works. I could have just looked in the code if he, like, you know, has a minimum dollar amount, but that's that's no fun, man. I gotta keep shooting myself over and over again. So anyway, this will be um, this will be death number one there. Excellent. And um, when you die, a little defibrillator man comes out and he shocks you in the chest. He's a homie. He says, uh, get up, Elon. The night is young. <laughs> it sure is, Elon. You are in for a wild ride of shooting yourself over and over again. So... I will probably just sit here and yap to myself and then edit the video and uh, I will be back after 35 times of me just shooting myself. Alright, let's get into it. One hour later. Load her up. Load her up, boss. Let me shoot. Let her rip, baby. Boom, bitch. Alrighty. We, um... I want to do one more, just to be sure, just to be sure, and then, by God, if I fucking die, I'm going to be so mad. If I die in the last fucking round, dude, I'm going to... I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to have to do it again. I don't want to do it again. I don't want to do it again. I don't want to do it again. I want to do other shit. All right. We we're in round one, but this is to prove a... To, to make a valuable point, so it's worth doing. Okay. Okay. I think I am in the negatives. I'm pretty confident I'm in the negatives. So I'm going to now attempt to win. And I, along the way, I will drink as much booze and smoke as many cigarettes as I can. But now I can start to try to win. And try to lock in the negative fucking score. Actually, I'm, so it's, I'm pretty sure it's going to be negative. We'll see. We'll see. If it's zero, that'd be a little disappointing. If it's positive, that would be very funny. So, <laughs> we will see what it is. I haven't looked in the code. I don't want to spoil it for myself. 
Anyway, let's go try hard mode now, where I don't shoot myself anymore. Dealer, you are gonna fucking get it. You just sat there and watched me kill myself like 50 times. Now you are going to die. Shoot the dealer, baby. And we hit. Okay, cool. So, we have survived. Now we just can't biff it in this round or else I'm going to be very sad. Because then I have to do the shooty myself thing over, all over again. Which would take me fucking an hour, bro. Alright, at long last, we arrive at the final showdown. No more defibrillators, no more blood transfusions. Now me and you, we are dancing on the edge of life and death. Okay, here we go. We got our little snippy snips. Ready to disconnect our life support systems. Alright, slot them in and then uh, here we go. Here, here, here we go. Four and three, and let's just go ahead and shoot again and hope to hit. And we do not. Oh my god. All right, it's now four and two. Ooh, it's not looking so great, actually. Because uh, if he hits us twice with handsaws here, we are in very bad shape. Which would be hilarious. Because I spent so fucking long doing all this shit, bro. All right, because he's got a guaranteed two on us here. And if he looks again, I mean, he's got a 60% chance of getting another guaranteed two on us. Which would then put us into the snippy snip range here. Which is a little nerve wracking. A little nerve wracking. Okay, because it's a uh, three and two now, right? It's a 60% chance. Alright, thank God, he saw a blank. Alright, it's now a three and one, so let's just shoot yourself, bud. Oh my god, though. Now it is a 75% chance that we go down into snippy snip range. Which is not good. Not good at all. So I just have to shoot here and hope for the best. Alright, let's go ahead and shoot the dealer. And we hit. Okay. Now if the last one is a... Um, is alive, we just lose. But there's no way around that, really. Um, so he's gonna get his thing snipped, so now his cigarettes don't matter. Uh, we just have to hope that it's a 50-50 shot as to who's going to die here. Alright, please eject the... Oh my god. Bro, you've got to be fucking kidding me, dude. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> oh my god, bro. You've got to be fucking kidding me, bro. The next day. Well, that was fucking embarrassing. <laughs> it's hilarious, too, because I called out, like, three times. It's like, if I do all of this and I get to the last, you know, round and die, I'm going to be so pissed. Well, uh, I didn't want to have to sit here for a fucking hour again and do all that shit of just shooting myself. So I came up with a um, quick and dirty solution for this. So I'm going to play the first round, or I'm going to get through the screen where you enter your name and shit, and then I'll show you what I mean. Um, so basically I wrote a little bit of code, it's literally like just a tiny bit of C-sharp code to click in the right spots in a loop over and over again uh, so that the AI will just, not the AI, the player will just shoot themselves over and over again. We're gonna send Elon in, uh, we're going to put him in a hell, a hellish existence of just shooting himself over and over again, uh, this is the morning before I'm starting work, so I'm going to set it in motion and have him run until tonight when I come back, and I can uh, hopefully not fucking die in the last round again, and we can get a negative score. At least I'm assuming it's a negative score. I haven't cheated and looked at the code yet, but let's just start the program up. You'll see what I'm talking about. All right, let's go. Um, Buckshot self-shooter. There we go. All right. Literally all it does is it just shoots or it just clicks in a loop. So it'll click um, where the first door is, left click. It'll click where the second door is, left click. It'll click where the uh, gun is in the middle and then it will click on itself over and over again in a loop. Luckily none of the elements lined up so I can just kind of have it do this over and over again. So he's just gonna shoot himself and uh, I'll just uh, record until we've demonstrated the loop 
and then I will let it do its thing for a few hours while I try to get some work done and uh, then I'll come back and have hopefully a very very low score um, pretty great pretty great all right go ahead buddy go ahead Elon you're trapped in a hell where you can only shoot yourself over and over again all right so that is round one there iteration one now I just gotta let him, uh, I'll, I'll demonstrate how he can go through doors with uh, just a few simple clicks, baby. All right, go on through. Yeah, I didn't feel the need to like, you know, mod the game to do this. It's literally just like eight lines of code in a while loop <laughs> within um, uh, C sharp. I always say work smarter, not harder. All right, so he kicks the door in and then goes right on back to it. His busy, job of shooting himself in the face over and over and over again. I am sipping on some McDonald's coffee. Uh, it is not the best coffee, but it'll do, man. It'll do. Alright, go ahead and shoot yourself, buddy. <laughs> it's beautiful. Works beautifully. Wow. So cool. Alright, anyway. You've seen that it will just keep looping over and over again, so I'm going to stop the recording here to preserve my hard drive space. And I will be back once it's done and I'm ready to fucking beat this game. If not, I will let it run overnight and then do it the next morning if I fail yet again. Alright, anyway, see you guys later. Alright, welcome back. Uh, I have left this thing running for hours trapping Elon Musk in a hell of shooting himself over and over and over again. So let's see if I can go win now. I hope I do, or else I have to do it all over again and um, trap him in further cycles of torment until tomorrow morning, at which point I will actually just leave it running through work so he'd be trapped there for quite a while. Let's see if we can get a negative score here, baby. All right, that is one and two per usual. Now I'm gonna try to win. I'm gonna try to win and I'm gonna hope I do because if I don't, I suck at this game. All right. So we shoot and we hit. Excellent. So we've made it out of the round. We move on to the lethal round. And I really hope that I don't fucking die here again because that was such a bummer last time. After I spent an hour manually shooting myself over and over again. Long last, we arrive at the final showdown. No more defibrillators, no more blood transfusions. Now me and you, we are dancing on the edge of life and death. All right, here we go. And uh, first one, I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna take blind. It's 60% chance of hitting, and we do, excellent. And then now it's two and two, and um, I will be going to, or I will be using a magnifying glass to search for the win here. He gets his little fucking defibrillator snippy snipped. No more getting revived. Are you ready? Are you ready, bud? You are going to die soon. Very, very soon, as it turns out. All right. And now uh, let's just search for the win. All right, give me the win, buddy. Give me the win, boss. And that is the win. All right. Uh, no need to saw it off. I just send one into the dealer, call it a day. Boom, bitch. All right. And now let's see how low our initial, well, not our initial score. I'm thinking in endless mode terms. Let's see how low our score is. Uh, we're gonna see if it's negative or some other number. Let's see what we got. We can also see how many times uh, Elon died while I was uh, at work for the day. All right, we got some uh, hella money here. Hella Bezos bucks. Um, so it looks like a lot of money, but let's see how much money it actually is. <laughs> I'm anticipating not a whole lot. We got our briefcase full of money. Let's see how much it is. Congratulations, Elon. And, uh, shots fired a fuckload. <laughs> okay, so, okay, okay. So, at minimum, you get is zero dollars. It does not go negative. That's interesting. Uh, but as you can see, this is what zero dollars looks like, I guess. It looks like a briefcase full of money. Must be Monopoly money, because, um, it's apparently worthless. But, uh, that's interesting. I thought that it might go negative. Godot only has signed integers, so I'll have to look at the code and see um, where that that minimum is implemented and how it's implemented and see if we can't uh, get around it. So I'll be back. I'll bring the code up. I'll take a little look-see doodle. I hear my cat Gus coming up. He's going to greet me, but um, I will be right back after I've investigated the code and I will return with my findings.
Hey, how's it going, everybody? And I'm back with the code, as promised. So let's take a look at what's going on here. This right here is the code that determines what your final score is in uh, regular mode. All right, so let's take a look here. This is Funk Final Score. So this stands for function. It's a function that is called into and you get a final score. So let's just go through it. So the first part is that basically the code is gathering all of the metrics that are needed to display the last, like your final end score screen. So this right here, these are just getting your player stats that are collected throughout the game. Uh, then it's setting a variable called max cache and setting that to 70,000. So um, as those of you know, when you're playing the game, the maximum score that you can get is $70,000. And that's if you don't have any penalties applied whatsoever. Or so you think. Anyway, <laughs> we'll get to that in a minute. Now we look down here, this part down here, this is just subtracting your penalties. So for example, you have your cancer bills, which are kind of a funny name for it. Um, it's your cigarette smoked times 220. And then you have your new leg bones price, which is doors kicked times 1000. And you have your DUI fine, which is milliliters of beer drank times 1.5. Now, this milliliters of beer drank gets incremented by some amount that I don't remember as you're going through the game. It's some some multiple per um, can of beer you drink, but that ends up getting subtracted from your score as well. And then uh, you'll see here that uh, all of those penalties get subtracted from our maximum cash prize of 70,000. So it's um, the max cash minus the cancer bills minus the DUI fine. And then if you ever die once where your doors kicked is greater than two, so beyond the two doors that you kick initially to get into the room, your total cash is subtracted further by your new bone, leg bones price. All right, so if you died once, you'll have four doors kicked, which is greater than two, and you're subtracting 4,000 from your score. And then you can see here the reason why it didn't go to a negative value is because it checks here. It says if total cash is less than zero, it sets the total cash to zero. So. As we can see here, our maximum cash is $70,000. Our minimum cash is $0, right? Makes sense, makes sense. And um, I don't really see any way around this, do you? Um, if you think about it in you know normal math terms, this these values can get infinitely large, but as long as we are setting any value for total cash that is less than zero to zero, then this this is always going to be the case. Minimum $0, maximum $70,000. Well, let me tell you something. This is not normal math. This is computer math, AKA stupid math, all right? Now, before I get too in the weeds with it, I just wanna give a nerd alert, all right? So I'm gonna be getting into some math and code topics and I know a lot of people aren't going to be into that necessarily, so I'm going to put a timestamp here in editing that will tell you when the uh, scary numbers have gone away and you can come back and enjoy some more funny commentary from yours truly, all right? All right, so I'm going to let those people get out of here. The rest of you, you are in Swirly Central now. You are in the Nerd Center, all right? And we're going to learn bunch of shit about binary and math and code and shit all right let's just do it i don't know what's gonna happen let's see what happens all right so the first thing that we need to do to understand what i'm talking about in terms of like how we can make this value this maximum cash value of seventy thousand moot and we can get above it we need to understand how binary and bits work all right so basically computer representations of numbers and data all right, so let's take a look at this. You've probably seen, you know, like hacker fucking images or whatever, where it's always a bunch of zeros and ones and shit, right? That's binary, all right? So binary, they're basically numbers represented by something called a bit or data represented by a bit. A single bit is simply a zero or a one. It is a true or a false, and uh, those are the only two values that they can be, all right? You probably also heard terms like bytes, kilobytes, gigabytes, just to give you an idea what that is. Uh, this right here is four bits. Let's extend it out to being eight bits. That, my friend, is a byte. 
All right, so eight bits is a byte, um, but we are mostly gonna be focusing on bits for this presentation, all right? I just wanted to throw that in as a little, you know, a little, uh, little bit of extra information for you from yours truly directly to you. All right, so let's move on. What does it mean? What does this number mean? Well, let's bring it down here. Let's bring out another number, 1101. What the fuck is that? All right, it's just a bunch of ones and zeros. All right, well, this is a number. This We can treat this as a number in base two. Now, what does that mean? Let's take a number like this. This is 2,903. Um, it's just a random number I thought up. All right, so this is base 10. So this is base two, and this is base 10. Now, what does this number mean? I mean, a lot of you guys will know. It's, you know, it's 2,000s and, you know, nine hundreds and three ones, right? So let's just split it out. So let's color code it. Our purple is our thousands place, our uh, green is our hundreds place, our red is our tens place, and our blue is our ones place, all right? So we can basically write this number out. We could split it out into its components. So it's two times 1,000 plus nine times 100 plus zero times 10 plus three times one. In other words, this is 2 times 10 to the 3rd, plus 9 times 10 to the 2, plus 0 times 10 to the 1, plus 3 times 10 to the 0. And uh, 10 to the 0, anything to the 0, as um, many of you know, is always going to be 1. Alright? So, what this number is representing is a basically a simplification of this down here. Every digit represents a higher order of magnitude of 10. So basically, you're multiplying by 10 every time you're going up a digit. Binary is the exact same way, except we're dealing with two. So let's divide this number out the way we did it down here. So let's color code it. This is the eights place. This is the fours place. This is the twos place. And this is the ones place. Because we're dealing with twos now. So this is one times eight plus one times four plus zero times two plus one times one. All right. And then that right here is actually 1 times 2 to the 3rd plus 1 times 2 to the 2 plus 0 times 2 to the 1 plus 1 times 2 to the 0. So this is basically the exact same thing as down here except this digit we've swapped it out for being a 2. All right. And our maximum digit that we can get is 1. It's either 0 or it's 1. Down here in base 10 we have 10 different values that numbers can be. But in base two, they can only be two. But it works the exact same way. It's just that our base number here, what we're multiplying, um, they're, they're all powers of two as we're going up in digits. All right, so the ones place, the twos place, the fours place, and the eights place. So what does this all add up to in base 10? This is 13. So this is the binary representation of the number 13 in base 10. So that's all that binary is. It's actually relatively simple. It's just that you have to remember that instead of 10 going up by a multiple of 10 every time, or not a multiple, by, instead of multiplying by 10 every time you go up a digit, uh, you're going up by two. You're multiplying by two every single time. All right? So hopefully that makes sense. Let's move on to addition. How does addition work in base two? Well, it actually works very similarly to how it does in base 10. So let's take a number here, 0010. What is that in base 10? Well, it's 0 ones plus 1 2. So that is 2. Um, let's take another number, 0 0 1 1. What is this in base 10? Well, it's 1 1 plus 1 2, and that is 3. So the way that we'd add this is just the same way that you would in base 10. All right, so we have 0 plus 1 is 1. Now, 1 plus 1, instead of being a 2 down here, because this is base 2, instead we get a 0, and we carry the 1 over, just like you would if you're adding 1 to 9, for example. You would get a 0 down here and carry the 1 over. It's the same thing with base 2. So it's 1 plus 1 is 0, carry the 1 over, and then it's 1 plus 0 plus 0, and we get 1 down here. And it's 0 plus 0, and that is 0. So our new number is 0, 1, 0, 1. And that is basically 1, 4 plus 1, 1, which is 5. Right there. Good stuff. Pretty simple. All right. Now, how does subtraction work? Well, let's take 0010, which is 2, as you know, from the previous example. 
and then we're subtracting 0, 0, 1, 1 from the pre previous example now instead of adding it. Now, just like in base 10, like let's say that we're subtracting 2 minus 3, the easiest way to do it is to swap the two numbers, right? So basically put the larger number on top and then put the smaller number on bottom. But when you swap them, you remember to make the, um, sorry, you got 3 and 2. You have to make the result negative, all right? So let's just do our regular subtraction. 1 minus 0 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. And then 0 minus 0 is 0. And 0 minus 0 is 0. So we get negative 0, 0, 0, 1. And if you couldn't tell, that is negative 1 in base 10. All right, so that means that 2 minus 3, because remember initially it was um, uh, 2 minus 3 here. 2 minus 3 is a negative 1. So that's how subtraction would work in base 2. However, we run into an issue. How can we represent negative numbers on a computer, right? Because we're dealing with bits here, you know, they're all ones and zeros and shit like that. Um, representing positive numbers is pretty simple, you know? Like we just have a um, bunch of zeros and then we just add the ones up together, you know, based on where they are in the number. Um, easy peasy, right? How do we represent a negative number on the computer? Well, one approach we could take is by just using, I don't know, the leading digit for example, right? So we could take this here, a two, and we could say if the leading digit, the first digit, the first bit is a zero, we could say this is a positive two. If we wanna make it negative, what we could do is we could set that leading digit or leading bit to being a one, right? So basically here, we can sacrifice one of our bits of data and use it to signal whether it's positive or negative, right? Seems pretty simple. So now this is negative two down here because it's zero, one, zero, which is two, but then the leading digit is a one, so it tells us it's negative, right? Pretty straightforward, but we run into some issues here. It's not so simple. Uh, we run into issues when we get to arithmetic. So for example, let's go with zero, zero, one, zero, which is two, plus one, zero, one, zero, which is negative two, right? So let's just run through it. This We should be getting zero out of this because two plus negative two is zero. So we do zero plus zero, and that is zero. And then we do one plus one, and that's zero, carry the one over. That's one plus zero plus zero, that's one over here. And that's zero plus one, which is one. All right, well, that doesn't really look like the zero to me. Instead, that actually looks like negative four, right? Because we have our leading digit, which is one, which is indicating that this is a negative number. And then the second digit is a one, and uh, this is in the fours place. So this right here means that two plus negative two is negative four, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So what we could do is we could have a bunch of branching logic that will basically check for the leading digit, see if it's negative or not, and then act accordingly, and then on the rest of the bits, and add or subtract them as necessary based on that first digit but it gets really messy right like what if you're adding two negative numbers to each other versus you know a negative plus a positive plus you know all sorts of shit it just doesn't really work out super cleanly right so this would work but we need to have extra work within the computer system to make it work right so what if there is an easier way and thankfully there is an easier way and it's called two's complement and it's pretty fucking neato, if I do say so myself. So, before we understand what two's complement is, I need to cover another topic. And that topic is overflow, the concept of overflow. And this might be a little tricky, so I'm going to go slow and I'm going to try to explain it, um, you know, in depth. So that it, you can retain it, alright? So let's take this number here. This is on a computer, okay? So this is four bits of information, and it's one, zero, zero, zero. And let's just assume that it's an unsigned integer, meaning that this is just going to be eight, all right? We don't have to worry about the leading one, it's just this is eight, okay? Because this is, you know, the one's place, the two's place, the four's place, the eight's place. This is an eight right here, all right? Let's take another eight, and we'll add it to the existing eight up here. So we have two eights added together, right? So it's pretty straightforward, 0 plus 0, 0 plus 0, 0 plus 0, 1 plus 1, and we end up getting 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. And this is a 1 in the 16th place, so this is 16, right? Well, 
keep in mind that we're working on a computer and we were defining, we're saying that these numbers are at maximum uh, four bits, okay? So this one over here extends beyond the bounds that we are defining for these numbers, right? So we're saying that these numbers can at maximum be four bits. So what ends up happening is this leading digit here gets cut off, it gets truncated. So basically we add zero plus zero is zero, zero plus zero is zero, zero plus zero is zero, one plus one is zero. We can't store any more information because in our computer system we're saying, hey, we can only have a maximum of four bits to represent our numbers. So this extra little one that should be carried over and put into the 16th place, it just gets, it just, it just goes away, it gets erased completely, we ignore it. So anything that gets carried over beyond the bounds of our numbers, which we have defined as four bits, just gets ignored. So instead, what we get when we had eight plus eight in a four bit system, we don't get 16, we get zero. Because you can see from here over, it's zero, 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 zero. So two uh, four bit numbers, when they're both eights, added together equals zero. It does not equal 16 in computer. As I said, this is not like normal math. This is computer math, AKA stupid math. All of our values, they have a maximum size that they can be because they're just data representations on the computer. So we're saying allocate this much space to represent some number, right? And we say how big that number can get. In this case, it's four bits, right? If it ever goes above that limit, we just truncate it. We say, hey, we're not gonna store any more data because we've defined the maximum size that this data can be. So these two numbers, when they run up against that bit limit, you lose information and you overflow, right? So this extra digit here, it overflowed and we're getting a zero now instead of 16 when we add eight plus eight in a four bit system. As I said, I'm kind of going, you know, for those of you who get it, I apologize for saying the same shit over and over again, but this is a little bit tricky, maybe a little bit difficult to understand, but that's what's happening, all right? So, overflow. Two's complement takes advantage of this, actually. So, I'll explain that in a minute. How do we represent negative numbers in two's complement? So we have 0001, which is positive one. How do we represent negative one? All right, well, in two's complement, you represent it as one, 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 one in a four bit system, all right? So when your numbers are a maximum of four bits, negative one in two's complement is one, 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 one. And I'll get to why that is in a second here. All right, let's look at this one, zero, zero, one, zero. This is positive two, all right? The negative version of that is one, 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 zero. So it's basically negative one, and if you subtract one from that, uh, we get one, 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 zero. This is how you represent negative two in two's complement down here. And then we have zero, zero, one, one. This is three, you know, positive three. The way you represent positive three in two's complement is you subtract two from negative one, and it's one, one, zero, one, all right? As I said, I'm gonna explain why it's represented this way in a bit, but um, the thing you need to know is that if there are more bits that we're allowing ourselves to work with, like more than four, this is how it extends in two's complement. All right, so let's say we have an eight bit number that we're working with here. So zero, 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 one. This is a byte, by the way, as I said earlier. The way that you would represent this in an eight bit system, a negative one in an eight bit system is one, 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 one. So the thing to note is that in two's complement, the leading digit will always be a one, all right? And you're going to, as you're getting further away from zero, you are subtracting basically, right? So basically the more zeros that there are, the further a zero is to the left in um, a negative number in two's complement, the larger the magnitude of the negative number. All right, so for example, over here, one zero 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 would be, uh, I think that would be negative eight in uh, two's complement. Yeah, it would be. All right, so why are we choosing to represent numbers in this very specific way where we're filling up 
every bit with ones to represent negative one, depending on how many bits we have at our disposal to represent a number. Well, we're doing it for a very specific reason. It's actually very clever. We are using overflow to our advantage. All right. I'm going to explain what this means through an example. All right. So here we have 0001, and that is one, if you couldn't guess, in base 10. And we're adding 1111, which, when we have four bits at our disposal to represent numbers, is negative one when we're using two's complement. All right. So this is one plus a negative one. So what we would expect to get would be zero, right? Well, let's see if that happens, all right? So what is one plus one is zero. Carry the one over, and that's one plus zero plus one, which is zero. Carry the one over, and that is one plus zero plus one, which is zero. Carry the one over, and that's one plus zero plus one, which is zero. Carry the one over, and then we get one zero 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 zero, which is 16. All right, well, that doesn't look right. One plus negative one is 16. But remember, the maximum number of bits that a number can be, well, I mean, the, all numbers in a four-bit system are going to be represented with exactly four bits. So this one out here is extends beyond our four-bit limit. So it's going to get discarded. It's going to get overflowed, right? So we discard this extra bit, and what we're left with is not 16, it is in fact zero. So what we've done is by using overflow and our representation of negative numbers in this very specific way, when we add them together, we get this really nice behavior where we overflow and we get the correct answer out of it, right? So in this case, one plus negative one and we get zero, all right? Let's take another look at an, you know take a look at another example. All right, to illustrate the point further. All right, so we got zero one zero one, which is five in base ten. It's the four. You know, there's one in the fours place plus a one in the ones place. Add those together, you get a five. Then here we've got one one zero one, which is negative three in um, two's complement binary when we're dealing with a four bit system. Let's add these two numbers together and see what we get. Well, 1 plus 1 is 0, and then we carry the 1 over, and it's 1 plus 0 plus 0 is 1. And then 1 plus 1 is 0, carry the 1 over, and that's 1 plus 0 plus 1, which is 0. And then we carry the 1 over here, we end up getting 10010, which is 18, right? However, because once again, we truncate this extra bit that extends beyond our four bit limit here it is not 18, it is in fact two, which is what we would expect to get when we add negative three to five, right? We add those two together, we subtract three from five, we get two. So we get this really nice behavior using overflow. It's great, it's really cool, okay? Well, you're asking yourself, delightful kiss boy, what the fuck does this have to do with anything? Why are you blabbing on and wasting my time talking about binary numbers and two's complement and yada, yada, yada? Well, let me tell you, all right? We can go from a positive number to a negative number by adding them together, adding two positive numbers together in this sort of system, all right? How do we do that? How do we add two positive numbers in this system and get a negative number. It doesn't make any sense. Mathematically, that seems impossible, right? Well, consider this example. Once again, four bit numbers. We have 0, 1, 0, 1, which is once again, five. All right, and we're adding 0, 1, 1, 1, which is seven, all right? So we're gonna add these two numbers together. As I said, this is four bits maximum. So four bits is all that we get to work with here, all right? So what we do is we start on the right and we add one plus one is zero. We carry the one over, one plus zero plus one is zero. Carry the one over, one plus one plus one is one. Carry the one over though, because we added three ones together. That's one plus zero plus zero is one, right? Now this would normally be 12 if this was an unsigned integer, but this is not an unsigned integer. Remember, any number in a twos complement system that has a leading one is going to be a negative number, all right? So when there are four bits, when our maximum va um, value is four bits of information, right? When, when, our, when we only have four bits at our disposal, 
This is not a 12. This is a negative four, all right? What we have done here is we have added two positive numbers together and we got a negative number, all right? As I said, this is not real math. This is stupid math, AKA computer math, all right? And in computer math, you can, when you get up to the, uh, to the limits of your numbers, when they start to push up against the bit limit of representation, you can add two positive numbers, you get a negative number, it wraps around. It overflows and becomes a negative number, all right? Now, why is this important? Why is this important? Let's go back to this example here. This example here, as we said earlier, the maximum cash you get is 70,000, but the minimum cash you get is $0. Now in normal math, this would be totally true. The max we get is 70,000, the min we get is $0, because anytime it goes below $0, we get zero. And 70,000, all we're doing is subtracting from it, right? But as we've proven here, when we're doing stupid math, we can add two positive numbers together and get a negative number. When the numbers get big enough, they become super fucking small, all right? Because they become negative numbers. Now, what happens if we subtract a negative number from a positive number? We add it to that number, okay? Now, if our penalty is a negative number, we add it on to our total cash. Now, what, which of these penalties is the easiest to control, all right? Is it the number of cigarettes smoked? Is it the number of milliliters of beer drank? No, it is the new leg bones price, which is just based on how many times you die. And you can die an infinite number of times in this game as long as you don't get to round three in normal mode, in story mode, I should say. Um, you can just keep dying over and over and over again, and this penalty is going to get larger and larger and larger. But when you get up to the limit, it's going to wrap around and become a negative number. All right, and once this becomes a negative number, we are going to be subtracting a negative number from our total cash of $70,000, all right? So, how do we do this? Okay, the first thing that we need to ask ourselves is how many bits are in an int, all right? And when I say an int, I'm talking specifically about the integer representation in Godot, all right? So Godot is, for those who don't know, that is the game engine that Buckshot Roulette is written in, all right? And ints are a variable type. So for example, when you see here var cancer bills equals cigarettes smoked times 220, this variable here, this is just like a location in memory, it is getting um, instantiated as an integer variable, an integer type, all right? So this is a number, um, but that integer type has a very specific size, all right? It has a size limit. Just as I was um, describing here where we were having four bits for our limit, this integer type in Godot also has a bit limit, all right? So what is it? Is it four bits like in our prior example? No, it's actually a lot more than that. A lot more than that. It is 64 bits to be exact, okay? So a Godot integer has 64 bits of information. Now, a lot of you might be saying, well, 64, you know, yeah, it's a lot, but it's not like a crazy amount more, right? It's just 60 more bits, right? But keep in mind that these numbers, just like, you know, in base 10, every time you add a zero, you're multiplying by some, by the base, all right? So with base 10, every time you add a zero to a number, it gets 10 times larger. Well, in base two, every time you add a zero, you are multiplying that number by two. So this is the one's place, the two's place, the four's place, the eight's place, the 16's place, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, 1024, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all the way up to two to the 64. So there are two to the 64 values, which for anybody who knows anything about exponents is a huge number. That is how many uh, numbers can be represented by an integer in Godot, all right? So, the highest integer that you can represent, highest positive integer that you can represent, is two to the 63rd minus one. The, the minus one is because there's also a representation of zero, all right? 
Um, the lowest integer that you can represent is negative 2 to the 63rd power, all right? So half of the numbers that you can represent with an integer are positive, half of them are negative. The reason there's a negative 1 here is because we have to, one of those positive integers that we can represent is a 0, all right? And that is where this minus 1 comes into play. All right, so 2 to the 64 total values and uh, within this range. All right, that is a huge number. So how many times do we have to die in order to get our doors kicked um, to wrap around to being a negative number so we can add it on to our total cash rather than subtracting it? Well, let's take a look, all right? How many times do we need to die in order to overflow? Well, let's get all of the numbers that we need in order to calculate this. All right, number one. I guess number number one, the first number we need to know is the max integer value. And as we've discussed earlier, it is two to the 63rd minus one. And when you fully expand that, that is nine quintillion, 223 quadrillion, 372 trillion, 36 billion, 854 million, 775,807, all right? That is the maximum integer value. So we need that. The second one is the number of doors kicked per death, which is two. Every time you die, you have to kick in the bathroom door and you gotta kick in the lobby door and you get back in and you fight that motherfucker in the, you know, in the, the gambling room, the, the shooty room, all right? But you can't forget the two initial door kicks. That's actually something that's kind of funny, is that you're always kicking at least two doors to get in there initially, but it only gets subtracted from your score if you die at least one time, all right? So two door kicks per death plus the two initial door kicks that we use to get in there before we've ever died, all right? Then the dollars deducted per door kicked is $1,000, all right? So these are the numbers that we need in order to determine how many times we need to die to get our penalty to overflow into a negative number. All right, so let's calculate it out. So first calculation, all right? We need to calculate, whoops, those are my, that's my headset dying, if you heard that. Anyway, um, we need to calculate the number of kicks that we need to do, the number of door kicks that we need to do. And we do that by dividing 9 quintillion, 223 quadrillion, 372 trillion, 36 billion, 854 million, 775,807, divided by 1,000, the $1,000 that we get per door kicked, all right? That's how many um, dollars, basically how many kicks that we need to get in order to reach this number of dollar penalty, all right? And that means that we need to kick the door 9 quadrillion, 223 trillion, 372 billion, 36 million, 774,776 times. That is how many kicks we need to apply to the doors, all right? Now, next thing we need to calculate. We need to take this number up here, this number of kicks, we need to subtract two from it. Those two are our initial door kicks, all right, that we don't even need a death for. Those are the initial two that we take to get into that room for the first time before we start dying several times, all right? So we subtract two from this number, and then we divide it by two, and that is the number of deaths that we need, which is... 4 quadrillion, 611 trillion, 686 billion, 18 million, 427,387 deaths that we need in order to get our penalty to overflow and become negative, all right? To reach this number right here. All right, dying this many times, dying this many times right here will make our penalty 9 quintillion, 223 quadrillion, 372 trillion, 36 billion, 854 million, 776 thousand dollars, which overflows to, I gotta say, I mean, I'm gonna, I have to say so many fucking numbers in this video, man. I mean, I could just say this number, but that, that doesn't seem, that's just not as interesting. I gotta say the number out loud. All right. Which overflows to negative... 9 quintillion, 223 quadrillion, 372 trillion, 36 billion, 854 million, 775,616 uh, dollars when we're using 64-bit integers, all right? So, this is how many times we need to die. 
However, if we subtract this number right here from 70,000, we're just going to end up overflowing again and get to a negative value, which will get us to zero. Because think about this. This number is right up against the limit. All right. Our initial total is 70,000. I mean, usually if you smoke enough cigarettes or whatever, it's going to go lower than that. But let's just assume that's the full 70,000 just to be safe. Um, if we subtract this giant number from this over here, I mean, I guess it's kind of minuscule because it's negative. It's going to end up overflowing in the positive direction. We're going to get a negative number again, which the code will just reset to zero because it's less than zero. So TLDR, you know, I don't have to go through the whole fucking rigmarole again. We need to die 35 more times to get $70,000 added to this negative number. Um, bringing our penalty to a grand total of, oh my god, negative 9 quintillion, 223 quadrillion, 372 trillion, 36 billion, 854 million, 705,616 dollars. So that is how many times we need to die. We need to take this number here, add 35 to that, and that is how many times we need to die in order to get the maximum score at Buckshot Roulette. That is the true maximum, all right? So, what I'm gonna do next, well, okay, before I get to it, sorry, I'm jumping the gun. I'm, I'm excited because I'm gonna do a demo, but first of all, before that, let's just plug it into the code and see how this behaves, all right? So, if doors kicked is greater than two, hmm, is there a number of doors kicked in this scenario greater than two? Well, I did the math, I crunched the numbers, and yes, I've concluded, that 9 quadrillion, 223 trillion, 372 billion, 36 million, 854,846 is in fact greater than 2. So we've satisfied this condition right here. And now we have our total cash, which is 70,000, and we are subtracting um, our negative... I'm not going to say it again, dude. Don't make me say it again. I'm not going to do it this time. I'm putting my foot down. I've said it before. This number. We are subtracting this number from our total cash. And we get the grand total. Okay, I'll say this one because it's been big and it's big and in red. I gotta say it. I gotta say it. Our grand total is nine quintillion two hundred and twenty-three quadrillion three hundred seventy-two trillion thirty-six billion eight hundred fifty-four million seven hundred seventy-five thousand six hundred and sixteen dollars is our grand total. This is how much money we will get if we die that many times, which is much greater than the supposed maximum score of 70,000. Now think about that. That's a fuckload of money. That is more money than has ever existed ever. Now just imagine what you could do with that money. Imagine how much Red Bull you could buy. And let me tell you, it would be at least 50. You could get at least 50 Red Bulls and then you could, you could divide them up amongst your boys. That'd be fucking sick. That is so much money, all right? So much more than $70,000, a measly sum. This is, this is crazy. This, we, are, we are establishing in a galactic government with this amount of money, all right? Anyway, now I will get to the demo. This is what I was excited about. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Godot. I have a decompiled version of the game, which I have decompiled myself. I have purchased the game. I would recommend you doing so before you open the game up. I think Mike... Uh, Kloblinka, sorry, excuse me. I think he's, I don't know how to pronounce his name, but he's the developer. I think he is comfortable with people decompiling the code. He has not expressed any concerns about people doing it, but um, please be respectful because, you know, decompiling random programs and showing them is, um, you know, it, it's legal, legally questionable, all right? But uh, he's an indie dad. He seems like a chill guy, and people have been doing it, and he's, he's kind of enjoyed it so far. So I'm going to be showing um, me updating, making one small update to the code to set it to a high value, and then we're going to see what happens. So anyway, I will be right back with the Godot. All right? Bye-bye. All right, welcome back, everyone, for the demo. This is demo version of Delightful Kiss Boy, uh, and then I will give it back to pre presentation mode Delightful Kiss Boy in a bit. But uh, here's the code right here. I have it opened up in Godot, and I'm just going to make one change. I swear to God, I'm just making one small change, and we're gonna see what happens, all right? So what I'm gonna do here is at the top of this final score calculation is I'm going to update a value. So round manager 
dot player data uh, dot uh, what is it? What's it called? It's uh, stat doors kicked. All right. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this to a very very high value, the one that I pulled directly from my presentation, and that's all I'm gonna do. All right. So all it's gonna do is it's going to at the end of the game, update this value to this ridiculous number right here. And uh, then we're going to see what happens when we actually play the game. By the way, I just want to throw this in as a little Easter egg. It's actually kind of funny. Um, Mikey Boy, he uh, added these, uh, these three little uh, lines as comments. So they're commented out so they don't actually do anything in the game. But uh, I think he was considering having some silly names lead to some silly conclusions. So, for example, if you put in sex as your name um it would set your totals total cash at the end of the game to 69 dollars nice and then uh leet would be 1337 and then snoop or weed or kush would set your cash to 420 dollars um he decided i guess to go against that um but he left the comments in and they're kind of inter kind of entertaining anyway Let's go ahead and uh, boot up the game. Uh, I'm going to boot the game up and then uh, we'll go from there, all right? I will be back once the game has booted up. All right, BRB. All right, I am back with our special version of Buckshot Roulette, which is roughly the same, minus that one um, line being switched out. You'll notice the visuals are a little fucked up, and it's because the... Um, Decom decompilation process is not like lossless, all right? You lose some amount of data, specifically assets and that sort of thing, um, when you decompile the game. But uh, So it's going to look a little janky, but the mechanics are all the same, except for that one little change I made to make us the ultimate loser with, you know, nine quintillion, no, nine quadrillion doors kicked. All right, let's just go ahead and start her up. I'll probably edit this down so that it uh, won't go on for too fucking long, um, but uh, let's we'll just jump right into it and uh, try to get a win here and uh, try to get all the way to the end and see what happens. Yeah, as you can see, like the fucking like ceiling and shit is kind of fucked up here. And like some of the shading is, is a little bit different too. Once I go in here, like the, uh, the bullets and stuff look different because it wasn't uh, translated properly in the decompilation process, but uh, it's all good, it's all good. All right, yeah, we just signed the waiver as normal. I'm gonna send in, uh, we sent in Elon earlier. Let's just send him in again, all right? We got Elon, and uh, I will be back with, uh, hopefully a W pretty soon here, pretty soon here. I'm gonna cut the recording here because just me playing regular mode here, and then I'll cut back in the end once I have gotten there. All right, bye-bye. All right, we have made it to the final round. No more defibrillators, no more blood transfusions. Now me and you, we are dancing on the edge of life and death itself. All right, and the little snippy snips come out. We're gonna see if we can get through this round and get into the, well, just get our score. Get our, um, hopefully, very high score if my theory proves to be correct. Otherwise, I will be outed as a fake and a fraud who doesn't know anything about programming or math or computers or anything are you ready i am ready i am ready i am ready all right so his thing gets snipped and then uh what i'm gonna do here is i'm going to smoke twice to get out of death range because if it goes to his turn after we miss or whatever um we're not gonna want to die necessarily i don't think that would be a good call i'm gonna drink once because we get a slight advantage on odd bullet loadouts so now we have a two-thirds chance of winning here so I'm just gonna go ahead and take that and we miss though all right so he is going to smoke which doesn't do anything because his thing got snipped and uh, he's gonna shoot us twice here so I'm glad that I smoked because we will go back down to one then we just gotta land one more shot on him and then the uh, the game is ours and we are still above snippy snip territory so I'm feeling fine about this all right because he's, he's going to get a guaranteed um, two on us because he's going to see the first one's live and then the second one, we already saw that the first one's live and the second one is also live, which he will know because it's the last shell in the loadout. He's just going to shoot us again, but uh, it's no big deal. NBD, baby. All right. He turns it around and he shoots us and now we go to one. One above our snippy snip range. All right. And then we go to the next loadout here. 
And we're gonna hope to get magnifying glasses and handcuffs. That is it. All right, two pairs of handcuffs, magnifying glass. Mag okay, yeah, ask and you shall receive. All right. This is probably where we win right here. That is uh, four and two. So we have a we have a guaranteed win here, actually. So I just need to look and we see the win. All right. So let's just go ahead and shoot the fella and then get our score. All right, we shoot him. Boom. Put him down. Let's get our score after we've uh, supposedly kicked that door so many fucking times. Let's see what happens. All right. It's going to hand us our special loaded briefcase here. And this should be full of uh, a ton of cash. I mean, it looks just the same as any other briefcase. But uh, this is no ordinary briefcase. This has much more than $70,000 in it. Should my theory prove to be correct. All right. So, let's see what happens. Here we go. What is our score? The suspense is killing me. Congratulations, Elon. We've got shots fired, blah, blah, blah. And then we have doors kicked. Oh, there we go. And there you have it. Okay. So slightly lower than the number that I gave because I did, in fact, uh, smoke some cigarettes and drink some beer. But uh, pretty fucking close. That right there is... Um, as I said, uh, 9 quadrillion, 223 trillion, 372 billion, 36 million, 874,776 doors kicked for a, ca a cash total of 9 quintillion, 223 quadrillion, 372 trillion, 36 billion, 854 million, uh, 843,400 dollars. So... That, right there, is the maximum, well, close to the maximum score that you can get in Buckshot Roulette, 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 well above the previously thought maximum of 70,000. So if you aren't getting in this range, it's, it's fucking, it's chump change. I didn't even do anything, you know, illegal here except for decompiling the game. But this is, you could do this naturally, right? All you have to do is die that many times, and then you get a score like this. So, if you're not doing this, you're not playing optimally. Anyway, I'm going to catch you guys back on the on the presentation. Back to you, presentation, delightful kiss boy. All right. Let's go. Let's go. Demo over. Demo over. Bye-bye. Now, we are back in the presentation space. Thank you, demo, delightful kiss boy. But we are back with a professional presentation. Now, I hear what you're saying. Sign me up, delightful kiss boy. I'm ready to be the richest person on the planet. By far. By far. All right? But how long will it take me to do this? Well, about that. All right? Let's look at the math here. All right? It takes about two minutes to end your miserable existence each time in the normal story mode. It takes about that much time to go th into the room and shoot yourself twice and then get defibrillated by defibrillator man and then get up and you know do it again or whatever that's about a two minute process without speeding up animations i'm just talking about the base game at least that's what i managed to do on my own time all right average of about two minutes we'll say that means it will take you about two or uh, sorry nine what is that uh that is nine quadrillion 223 trillion, excuse me, 223 trillion, 372 billion, 36 million, 854,844 minutes to die, 4 quadrillion, 611 trillion, 686 billion, 18 million, 427,422 times. That's how many minutes it will take, which is about 153 uh, trillion seven hundred and twenty two billion eight hundred and sixty seven million two hundred and eighty thousand nine hundred and fourteen hours which is about uh, what is that six trillion four hundred and five billion a hundred and nineteen million four hundred seventy thousand thirty eight days which is about um, 17 billion five hundred and forty eight million two hundred seventy two thousand five hundred and twenty one years which is more time than the universe has existed so it will take you a very very long time to do this 
But we got time, man. Just start now. Start today. Lock in that high score. Do it right now. This is perfectly so it's it's perfectly reasonable to do this. This is basically this is glitchless, actually, if you think about it. Because all you're doing is you're doing legitimate game game actions, which is dying this many times, and then you get the highest score possible. Alright? So, conclusions. It turns out that the optimal strategy for Buckshot Roulette is to shoot yourself for 17 billion years. This is the conclusion I have come to. This is the conclusion that you should take away. This is how you should be playing optimally. All right? Forget what I said earlier about why you shouldn't shoot yourself. This is the way that you lock in the high score. And if you aren't doing this, you are playing like trash. You're taking your meager 70,000 maximum and you're, you're calling it a day. You're leaving so much money on the table. You are playing incorrectly, inoptimally. All right? Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. All right, bye.